Hi, welcome to the Louis File. Have you ever um, felt as though you're, no one believes you, um, no one wants to be around you, maybe your own family has uh, told you to stop calling, uh, stop coming around, I don't have time for you. You know, I've known lots of people that have uh, done things that have messed up their lives. They've gotten involved in drugs and alcohol and several marriages and, you know, maybe they were stealing things or, I, you know, you can name lots of stuff uh, that over the years would wear on uh, someone's family and friends. And, you know, there comes a time when you have to say enough is enough. And uh, it's a thing called tough love when a mom or a dad or a brother someone has to say, you know what, I just can't help you anymore. Um, you have lied to me for the last time and I just don't have any more for you. You know, I run into that from time to time and it's a painful thing to watch. And uh, then when the person who is not being trusted is genuinely uh, wanting to put forth the effort and do the right thing, uh, there's no one there to support them. Um, so it just gives them, it gives you, a, it gives an excuse to go and just go ahead and get high or drunk again, because why bother? You know, the Bible tells us that Jesus uh, was acquainted with grief. And that uh, in Hebrews, it says that he was tempted at all points, yet was without sin. And, and that we have a high priest that can sympathize with us because he understands our weaknesses and our troubles. You know, I was thinking about <laughs> some of the stuff Jesus had to deal with that we don't always think about very much. You know, in John chapter 7, his own brothers, it says, didn't believe in him. You know, I was going to read you a couple of scripture here. You know, in Mark, let's see, Mark 3, 20, starting at verse 20, it says, And he came home, and the crowd gathered again to such an extent that they could not even eat a meal. When his own people heard of this, they went out to take custody of him, for they were saying, he has lost his senses. Basically, his own family was saying Jesus had lost his mind. So they went out there to get a hold of him. They were going to put him in custody, I guess. I mean, that's quite alarming to me. You know, you think about Jesus being sinless. You think about him loving and forgiving and healing people. But, you know, the other side of that is, is that there was a lot of people that thought he was nuts. You know, the religious leaders thought he had a demon. They said, you you have a demon. <laughs> thought he was delusional. I mean, so sometimes <clears throat> when you are uh, walking in clarity, there's a bunch of people around you that aren't. You know, and to you, your conscience is clear, your mind is clear, you're being honest and open and walking in the light. But other people aren't and they're looking at you thinking that you're the problem it's quite quite a, a remarkable uh thing but i wanted to ch to end with one one more passage and it's found in matthew 12 46 through 50. matthew 12 46 through 50 it says while he was still speaking to the crowds behold his mother and brothers were standing outside seeking to speak to him someone said to him behold your mother and your brothers are standing outside seeking to speak to you but Jesus answered the one who was telling him and said, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? And stretching out his hand toward his disciples, he said, Behold, my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father who is in heaven, he is my brother and sister and mother. Now this is not to say that his earthly siblings and Mary, his earthly mother, was not his family. But I think that this is just showing us that when it comes to allegiance, when it comes to real family, it's a spirit family. And those that are in Christ with you, if you're in Christ, are really closer to you than even your blood family, if they in fact aren't in Christ. Now, of course, if they are, then that's great. But sometimes we have to make decisions and choices uh, to go with God and what he's doing, even when our family wants to... Uh, ostracize us. Now, I started this video talking about people that had been in jail and drugs and all that kind of thing. Now, that's a little bit of a different reason to be put out. I understand that. But ultimately, the feelings are the same. The feelings of uh, rejection and the feelings of misunderstanding, the feelings of uh, lack of trust. They're all rough and tough things to do. But my suggestion is that you walk in the light, walk in the spirit, 
the best you know and the best you understand. And then you let God sort out the family. You let God sort out the others. And he will draw them to himself and maybe even by you. But what you do is you just rest in what God is giving you and you wait. <laughs> you wait. The Bible is full of uh, lessons for us from God that says, Be still and know that I am God. And he that waits upon the Lord will mount up with wings as eagles. So waiting and being still is a big part of, of the Christian life. So that would be what I would say to you. If you're having troubles convincing somebody of your sincerity, wait. Be still. Just trust God. He'll, he'll fix this thing. He will work it out. And if he doesn't, you just work on keeping your conscience clear. The best you understand. Let the Spirit of God be your guide and uh, he will guide you. All right. I'll talk to you later. Thanks for listening.